If you've had a birthday this week, we just want to wish you happy birthday. This week's lesson happened in someone's upper room. But before we get into the story, let's worship. So just close your eyes quickly, we're going to pray. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, that although we can't come in together as in person, Father, you still have provided the means for us with technology to worship and praise you and listen to your story and, and learn, Father. So I pray that you'll just help us right now to worship you with our whole hearts um, and to celebrate who you are and what you've done in our lives. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's go into worship, guys. <music>
before the earth was made. You knew my life, my name. Before the waters roared, you knew who I would be. And to show us who you are, you formed the moon and stars, all the world around us that we see. Cause by your word, you made day and night. And by your breath, you brought us all to life. Before we start, I want to just ask you a question. Have you ever lost a close one, a family member or a friend or even a pet? Have they passed away or, or left, moved houses, gone far away? How did that make you feel? Well, today we're going to see two accounts where the disciples lost Jesus. On the first account, we see that Jesus was crucified. And the disciples' response to this was they fled, they ran away. Peter denied knowing Jesus three times because he was afraid of what those who had arrested him would do. But the second time was different. The second time, after Jesus rose again, he was with his disciples for 40 days. And then oh, he walked them up and they worshipped together on a mountain. And then in the Bible, in Luke says he ascended before them. And after he ascended before them, they walked down the hill and instead of being afraid or terrified of what's going to come next, they worshipped, they celebrated, they went down the hill singing and praising with joy. And there was two massive different changes there. But before Jesus ascended, he left them with one instruction. Well, he left them with a few instructions, but we left him with this, this instruction. We're going to read about it in, Ma in Acts chapter 1. So pause the video. Go run and grab your Bibles, and then we'll read together. So have you got your Bibles? 
So turn with me to Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So today, our story is about the disciples waiting in an upper room. They were waiting there, praying, because they were instructed to wait for the Holy Spirit, who will empower them to proclaim the good news. So we're going to go now into our story video to see what happened next. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus' disciples were gathered together in Jerusalem. All of a sudden, a sound came from heaven. It was like a strong rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where Jesus' disciples were staying. Then tongues appeared like flames of fire, and they rested on each of the disciples. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in different languages. Peter spoke to a crowd that had gathered. God pointed out to you Jesus Nazarene, he said. You saw the miracles, wonders, and signs God did through Jesus. Even though God planned for Jesus to die, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. But death did not keep hold of Jesus. God raised Jesus from the dead. Then Peter said, You have seen the truth. Jesus is alive. He went up to heaven to be with God the Father. Do not doubt this, Peter continued. When you killed Jesus, you killed the Messiah. The Holy Spirit convinced the people that Peter was telling the truth. What must we do to be saved, they asked. Peter told the people to repent, to turn away from their sins and to turn to God. God will forgive your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the name of Jesus, he said. Everyone who believed Peter's message was baptized. That day, about 3,000 people joined Jesus' followers. They learned what Jesus' disciples taught, and they met with other believers every day. They broke bread together and prayed. God kept his promise to send the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit's help, Jesus' disciples could begin their work to share the gospel with the entire world. God gives the Holy Spirit to those who trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit gives us power to do God's work, and he changes us to be more like Jesus. Wow, guys, what an amazing story. Can we see that the disciples were waiting in the upper room just as Jesus had commanded them to wait and pray in Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit arrived as tongues of fire on the disciples' heads. And that the, uh, Peter was so filled with the Holy Spirit and the power that Jesus said would come with it, he had the confidence to go outside and preach to over 3,000 people. And he preached. These people were the ones that were so angry with Jesus that they got him crucified. And he preached to them saying, you have killed the Messiah. And, they, and he preached to them the good news saying that this is the, Jesus, this is the Messiah that will save us. So they call it, what must we do to be saved? And he and 3,000 people were saved that day and were added to the church. And as the TJ is going to come and explain to us a bit more about this. And I think what's really cool, Brad, in the story, we can really see that the Holy Spirit, we believe in a three-in-one God, and the Holy Spirit is God, which is so exciting. So I've got a little demonstration for us to really understand the Holy Spirit a little bit better but I really don't want you to try this at home by yourself if you want to try this at home 
you have to ask an adult, your mom, your dad, someone that's an adult to try this with you. Because we're going to be playing with some fire and that's really not safe. Okay, so for today I have a tea bag, I have a scissors, and I have some matches. So in our story we can see that the Holy Spirit came to the disciples as tongues of fire. So I have a tea bag over here. I want us to pretend that the tea bag is just like us. So this is the tea bag and this is us, okay? Can we see in the tea bag over here? It has some black stuff in it, okay? The black stuff is just like the sin in our lives. We really do things that goes against God's purpose and that fills us and makes us really heavy, okay? So God provided us Jesus in our lives, okay? And when we accept Jesus into our lives, this is, this is a bit like Jesus, okay? He, when we accept Jesus into our lives, he washes us clean with his blood. So I'm going to cut our tea bag over here. There's our tea bag, okay? So now we accept Jesus into our lives and we tell him we're sorry. Lord Jesus, please forgive us for all the sin that we've done in our lives. Please come and live in our hearts. And there you can see he washes the sin out of our lives, okay? So there we go. All the dirty, dirty sin comes out our lives. Okay. Over there, there's us now, okay. But we are human, we can't do this life by ourselves and in our own strength. So God sent the Holy Spirit to ignite us and set us alight and on fire for Him. Okay, so here's the match, just like it came in tongues of fire for the disciples. God set us alight through the Holy Spirit for Him. And what's really awesome is we can see we get set alight for him, we praise him, we honor him, and we worship him. And one day we're gonna go up to heaven and be with him. How exciting is that? So he sent us the Holy Spirit. Can you see the tea bag's gone? We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can feel him. He is with us. Okay, so I really want you to remember that. That if you're feeling like you're weak and you can't do this by yourself, the Holy Spirit is with you. Let's go through our memory verse for today. It comes from Philippians 2 verse 13 where it says, It is for God who works in me to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Now I'm going to add some actions to really help us remember it. So it is for God who works in me to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Philippians 2 verse 13. How amazing is this guys? Even through this story, we can see that God's plan for our life was very evident. And God's plan for us goes like this. Can we remember it? God rules, we sinned, God provided Jesus for us, Jesus gives his life for us, and we respond to him in awe and adoration, and he fills us with the Holy Spirit to be with us along this journey to worship him. So guys, for the rest of this lesson, ask your moms and dads, your aunts, your uncles, your friends, to go and look through the full lesson for you, click the link down below and follow the website for more information. And another great announcement guys is Trailblazers started again for grade fours to sevens. So go to our website for more information to see how you can join. Bye for now. Bye guys, see you guys next week.